I'm Mike, and welcome to Retro Boost. I talked about the Rad 2X Nintendo a couple months back, a very cool line doubling and HDMI adapter compatible with the Super Nintendo N64 and GameCube, with the very cool added perk of being able to grab onto RGB output from the Super Nintendo or modified N64s and European GameCubes as well, of last of which I don't have and couldn't show, but I could show the former things in RGB mode. Very cool device and very great performance for the price, which got me thinking, how does it compare to other devices by RetroTink? Since the Rad 2X is a partnership product between Retro Gaming Cables UK and RetroTink, how does it compare to the main RetroTink devices, the 2X Pro and the 5X Pro? Well, we're going to find out. So I'm going to be comparing the Rad 2X to the 2X Pro today. And then in another episode of this, part two, I'll be comparing it to the 5X Pro. So make sure you're subscribed to get notified when the new content comes out. Also, check out the channel's new Discord server, because if you do, you may have already seen this video, because stuff goes there first before it comes to YouTube. Awesome. Thank you to all my subscribers and those who are on the Discord server as well. Much appreciated. Let's get into talking the specifics about how these comparisons are going to work. First, a quick overview of both the devices. First, the 2X Pro, a device I've talked about quite a bit on the channel over the years. The 2X Pro is two things, a line doubling device and an HDMI converter. Simply put, you can take an old game console or old device, whether it be a VCR or like a game console, it'll convert it to HDMI, which is great because most modern day flat screen TVs don't have analog inputs anymore, so you can't connect your Super Nintendo to most things. With the 2X Pro and devices like it, now you can. But there's another added perk, the line doubling feature. This increases the quality of the picture. It'll take a 240p source and double it to 480p, which takes a load off the TV's processing and helps clean up the image some as it goes to a modern HD screen. So you get the added benefit of not just having your devices be compatible with your TV now, but they also look a lot better. The 2X Pro also has multiple filters. It can smooth out the image, which is very great for increasing the quality of 3D era game consoles, like the N64, for example. Helps clean those up. You can leave things default. It's called the Sharp Filter. Great for 2D graphics, like the Super Nintendo. It's what I'll be leaving this on. But there's also a third one, Scan Lines. Great for people that want to emulate the CRT experience, which is, after all, the era of television that these old game consoles came out in and for a lot of games what they're kind of designed to be seen with some games just are meant to be seen with scan lines it helps out but it just it depends case to case you don't have to use scan lines if you love them you have the ability to generate them here with the 2x pro other devices like the 5x pro can do it as well or you could just leave it with sharp or smooth and just get a nice clean image uh, so the 2x pro very multifaceted device it also accepts a wide variety of inputs. You can have component, composite, S-video as your options there. I'm making it compatible with pretty much anything game console-wise, but you are limited on the resolutions you can stick into it. It cannot accept resolutions that are 480p or higher as an input. So, if you're going to use component for devices like the GameCube, the PS2, the Xbox, the Wii, they have to be running in 480i output, which isn't as good as 480p. So that's where devices like the 2X Pro multi-format or the 5X Pro can offer a greater experience for those semi-modern retro game consoles. Today we'll be using Super Nintendo and we'll be using HD RetroVision component cables to the 2X Pro. Why not composite or S-Video for comparison? Well, they would get annihilated by the RGB mode the Rad 2X can do, so it's not even worth that comparison. The Rad 2X wins by default if you're going to run it against composite or S-Video to a device like the 2X Pro, because the Super Nintendo experience, at least, the Rad 2X can do some special things. Speaking of which, the Rad 2X. So, as I just said, we're going to be using component out of the Super Nintendo to the 2X Pro. Why? Why not do like everything possible? Well, it wouldn't make much sense because the Rad 2X with Super Nintendo can do something very cool. RGB mode. Yeah. <laughs> so the Rad 2X, much like the 2X Pro, is a line doubler because it was helped, it was developed in cooperation with Retro Tank, so it's got the line doubling properties uh, and also adapts to HDMI. So you get the same benefit of your old consoles converting to HDMI to your modern day TV. 
Uh, but the Rad 2X does something else pretty cool. It can actually grab on and extract RGB video out of certain things. The Super Nintendo can do that, and RGB modified N64s and European GameCubes can also do that. Which is awesome, because the picture quality is very comparable to this, like, upper tier, like what these component cables get you. Which is awesome, because it does that without the need to buying these, which is the whole point of this comparison. The 2X Pro averages like 130 bucks, the Rad 2X is like 80, but these cables are like 60. So what I really want to see here is how the Rad 2X handles Super Nintendo compared to the 2X Pro with these high-end cables, which would be effectively half the price for the Rad 2X. Making someone who's a real Super Nintendo enthusiast, the Rad 2X might be a great option. We're going to see how these all do what they do. So this will be RGB mode, Rad 2X. It does have a smoothing filter, we're going to keep that turned off, so it's going to be basically sharp versus sharp, the default kind of boot up. Uh, but we'll also do a scan line comparison as well, because the 2X Pro can do scan lines and Rad 2X can't. We'll see what that looks like side by side. So basically it's battle of RGB mode against component for the Super Nintendo. So the two games of choice, Mario Kart and Donkey Kong Country. Very different games graphically speaking. Mario Kart is like a more standard looking, colorful, simple Super Nintendo game. Donkey Kong Country is like the total opposite. Very complex visually, it's one of the Super FX chips. I want to see how these devices handle both of these types of games. We'll see them side by side and get a feel for it. Additionally, the last thing worth mentioning, these cables have a brightness setting or a contrast setting. It'll be on the darker setting for the 2X Pro. By default, the bright setting for these cables with the 2X Pro, it tends to be a little overexposed looking. The dark setting's a little better. So, now that we got all that figured out and the reasoning why, let's go ahead and start these comparisons.
Okay, so now that we've seen them side by side under what I would call normal circumstances, the 2X Pro doing sharp with the component, the dimmer setting, and then the Rad 2X RGB mode, no smoothing, what are we thinking? Well, the Rad 2X to me comes across as the clearer and more defined of the two. It's also brighter by default as well. Now I can flick the brightness switch on the cable and kind of fix that immediately. However, certain situations it's a little bit too bright. Like I said, overexposed. Some games it's more obvious than others and some games it looks just straight up better for it to be bright versus dark. It just depends. Historically, I've kept it on the brighter setting for most games I've played. Uh, for this comparison, these games just made sense through the darker setting. But it's all kind of preferential at that point. I mean, for both of these devices, we're beyond the scope of what the original game designers and console manufacturers intended. There really isn't like a right answer here necessarily. <laughs> uh, but it's just interesting to see that kind of by default, the Rad 2X is looking better. And again, at like half the price for buying the 2X Pro and these cables. For that price consideration, it would depend on what you own. I'm thinking that if you have like a Super Nintendo and maybe an N64 or even a GameCube, it's all the Nintendo stuff, the Rad 2X may be an excellent solution to get all that stuff to look a lot better on your modern day TV. If you had a lot of other things, or just different things, like you have a Super Nintendo, maybe a Genesis, now it's starting to make more sense to get something like the 2X Pro instead, because the Rad 2X, you know, it's you gotta buy a different type for each of these consoles or adapters or pieces that aren't like universal like the 2X Pro or RetroTank family in general is, since they just use RCA generic inputs as opposed to a specified adapter. Uh, so, interesting to see, but now let's also do a scanline comparison. It's one of the modes that the 2X Pro has to offer is scanline generation. Let's get a feel for what that looks like side by side with the Rad 2X, what the difference is. Scan lines with the 2X Pro, the same default, no smoothing RGB mode for the Rad 2X. And again with the 2X Pro running component. <laughs> Thank you. 
Scan lines are something that I've been kind of warming up to over the years. I don't have like a lot of nostalgia or really any nostalgia for like the CRT gaming experience. My first game console was the N64, roughly like two or three years after it first came to market is probably when I got mine for the first time. And then GameCube, I had a GameCube for like a decade before I got the Wii. Didn't get the Wii when it first came out, I didn't get it until like probably 2010, 2009-ish territory. So like, it's just not a lot of memory of like the CRT part of my childhood, the games take center point there. Uh, that said, running Mario Kart specifically with scan lines out of the 2X Pro looks really cool. Uh, and I had the cable on the brighter of the two settings. The, the added brightness kind of brings more of that CRT flavor out. You can even go further with the brightness with your TV's backlight or brightness settings, whatever you want to do to mess with it. Because uh, a more vivid, bright style of picture kind of gets you more of that experience. Uh, the 5X Pro really takes the cake there because it can do HDR signal flagging now, which means you can just do brightness to the max with your scan lines, which is really cool. Uh, but that is a really cool feature that the 2X Pro has that the Rad 2X does not have. However, value analysis here, the Rad 2X's default ability to grab onto that higher tier of picture quality, the RGB mode that it can do with consoles like the Super Nintendo without having to get extra or higher end cables is also a fantastic perk. So, which of the two did you like? Which of the two do you have? Obviously, I have both because I'm a maniac and I love comparing these things. It's very interesting to me. <laughs> uh, if I were to pick which one that I use the most often for the Super Nintendo, it would have to be the 5X Pro these days. However, for N64, the Rad 2X is definitely my go-to solution. I really like the RGB experience that the Rad 2X gets out of the Nintendo 64 compared to any other options, whether it be the 2X Pro running like S-Video or the 5X Pro with component or even scar i think the rad 2x takes the cake for super nintendo comparing these two devices i'd have to give the win to the rad 2x like it just has a cleaner more bright profile to it by default without having to mess with anything else and that comes at the half the cost of doing it the other way with the 2x pro ht retrovision component cables it's very expensive to do that that price may make sense for someone that owns a wide variety of consoles though. If the if Super Nintendo and maybe N64 was like your only thing, the Rad 2X probably makes a lot of sense. If you have a bunch of stuff, like I do, something more general use, like the 2X Pro or the 5X Pro, is probably the better of the two solutions. So they all have their purposes and their advantages. They're both great products, at the end of the day, they both work very well. I was glad to finally get to comparing these. I've been looking forward to this for a long time since the moment that I bought the Rad 2X. I know that I would be here, but we're not done yet. That was all the 2X Pro. We still gotta compare the 5X Pro. So stay tuned. Part two to this is coming up. Same games, uh, different ideas. We're gonna be doing like, well, same games and the same idea, I guess. We're gonna be doing default comparisons with the 5X Pro and also comparisons that use more of its optimized settings. So Super Nintendo sampling, scan lines, the works, HDR, all that good stuff. We'll get a comparison against the Rad 2X, same thing. So make sure you're subscribed to get notified when new content comes out, but also check out the Discord server because you could be watching that video probably right now. You don't have to wait for it to come to YouTube. It, it all goes there first. Bah. Thanks everyone though for watching and thanks everyone for subscribing. We passed 700 subscribers recently, which is phenomenal. Thank you all so much. And I will see you on the next one when we'll be comparing the 5X Pro to the Rad 2X.